because I believe that working class people need real representation in government. Yeah, and the citizen voices ought to speak louder than campaign contributions. Yeah. Yeah. Ours <laughs> is meant to be a government for and by the people, but as wealth is accumulating at the top of the ladder, so does political power. The result is not a government of the many, but a government by the money. It's, <laughs> it's a corruption of our democracy by corporate power any way you look at it, and it's wrong. I jumped into this race with my eyes wide open. I knew that it would take a lot of money to win. 26 counties is a big, a big amount of ground to cover, and it's a massive district. I'm going up against an incumbent. But there's an expectation for candidates like me to come to the table with money in hand. My background wasn't exactly suited to this post-Citizens United world that we live in. I, uh, I grew up in a military family with modest means, one of four kids. I'm a former city councilor. I ran a nonprofit organization. I mean, I even started my own business, but it's a small business, not a hedge fund. <laughs> so my Rolodex doesn't have a lot of millionaire financiers in it. It's instead a network of waitresses and teachers and farmers and students. You know, salt of the earth folks who are doing everything they can to make sure that they can build a secure economic future for their families. But none of that experience matters in a world where elections are bought and sold. Even to my party, experience finding solutions for my community wasn't nearly as important as my ability to come up with hundreds of thousands of dollars at the drop of a hat. You want to run for office? You better have significant wealth or immediate access to it. I guess that explains why there aren't more working class people in Congress. <laughs> but I'm not going to let that stop me. I will not sit idly by as this great nation of ours literally crumbles, as able-bodied citizens go without work, as corporate profits soar, and working people fall deeper into debt. We have the means to do better. What we're lacking, what we need, is the political will, the courage, the determination for change. And on the bright side, this isn't new territory for us. We've fought these battles before. We've seen our democracy strangled by an oligarchy when the corporate elite ran roughshod over working people. It was Bob LaFollette who sounded the alarm so long ago about how our top priority should always be fighting the encroachment of the powerful few upon the rights of the many. And boy, do we have a fight on our hands. So what are we going to do about it? It's election year. Are we going to sit back and complain? No. Are we going to throw up our hands in frustration and say, my vote doesn't count? No. No. We're going to get to work. We're going to get our power back. We're going to raise our heads and our voices to demand an inclusive democracy that we can all be proud of. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get organized. We're going to reach out to our neighbors and make sure that they know what's at stake. But we're not going to stop there. We're going to do whatever it takes to get them to the polls on November 4th. And we're going to build a progressive movement that transcends this election cycle. Yeah. Together, we're going to fight for good jobs that pay a living wage so working people don't have to live in poverty. We're going to push for universal health care so that you don't, no one suffers because they, don't, they can't afford treatment. We're going to push for equal pay for women because it's the right thing to do. We're going to invest in our nation's infrastructure and our education system so that we can rebuild our country and the middle class. And then we're going to do whatever it takes to overturn Citizens United and get big money out of politics. demand the kinds of policies that level the playing field so that every single person has the opportunity to succeed, regardless of their family's net worth or their ability to exploit a tax loophole. We know that government is the mechanism by which we can accomplish things together that we cannot do as individuals. It's time that we put our government, our government, to work for we, the people. 
And it's not about just this election. It's about fairness. It's about equality, compassion, responsibility. These are the shared values that transcend all of our differences. These are the values of citizenship that make us a part of something greater than ourselves. These are the values that make us proud to be progressives. And as Fighting Bob once said, progressivism embodies the hopes and desires of common people who are willing to fight for their ideals, to take defeat if necessary, and to still go on fighting. No one ever said that change was easy, but I hope that you're willing to fight for it anyway. Most of all, though, I need you all to keep the faith that things are going to get better. Never become so jaded and cynical that you forget that one vote, one vote can swing an election, that one person can make a difference, and that one idea can, in fact, change our world for the better. Thank you very much.